Welcome back, everyone, to the 0K June 2018 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic. We're into round two of the Swiss portion of the tournament. And the first match we're going to be watching for round two, possibly only one, depending on how long it goes, Unlucky versus RAR on Fairyland. So, Unlucky and RAR, both players that... I mean, okay, Unlucky I don't really know very well. RAR, a player that has gone from being very commander-focused to being very macro-focused, or more macro-focused. Unlucky, on the other hand, we saw as a player who is very keen at switching when they need to. Like, very good at understanding unit counters. And going for the Spider Factor, which is a curious choice. On Fairyland, I mean, I can kind of see it. There are hills you can hide behind and go around. But for the most part, it's a very flat map. Rar going for the much more dependable and reliable Shieldbot Factory, which we see a fair amount. People are asking in chat, what is the current factory meta? And it's a little bit hard to say right now. Tanks got nerfed recently, and they used to be really dominant. I would say Cloaking and Shield are always safe choices. Spider is an interesting choice. Amph has also fallen out of favor somewhat, and yeah, rovers haven't seen much use of. I've tried myself. It's they do seem to have a they do seem to be a little low tier right now. So yeah, if you're wondering what to play, you can't really go wrong with cloak or shield. It's just a generally good option. Spider is an interesting choice too. I don't necessarily agree with it. I like the Spider Factory, but it's a difficult choice to make work well. Unlucky, however, doing the right thing, setting up fleas for scouting to know exactly when the, when their opponent goes around, where they're going around. That's that is a good choice. Probably going to see a switch over to re the Red ba Venom Redback. We are seeing the Redbacks come in right now. Probably going to see Venoms come in soon afterwards because that's usually what you do with Spiders, or Redback Recluse maybe, or Venom Recluse, some combination of those three. Same time we have Rar going for just Bandits because yeah, go for Bandits. I mean the thing is that the Bandits are still, I mean they're still going to beat Fleas reasonably well. Redbacks, of course, they're right units. They will be able to deal with the bandits, but honestly, Rar just wants to scout. They want to know what's going on. That You don't need to worry too much about actually beating your opponent right now. They just want to scout, want to raid, make sure if their opponents are expanding that the bandits will stop it, because they certainly will. The Redback actually, that's going to slow things down, because now, unlucky, they can't easily expand over here. They have to set the Redback going to actually set up. They they could have had this Weaver over by this expansion by now, which Rar has, well, Rar hasn't done either, but Rar could also easily do that. I think they're worried about the Fleas, too. That's just one thing about playing spiders, is that the fleas do provide a constant threat your opponent has to deal with, because they don't know where the fleas are, they don't know how close the fleas are to any expansions that they're going to be built, so they don't know if they're going to start building an expansion and then suddenly lose a worker because two or three fleas come in and start ripping them to shreds. I mean, they may be weak, but fleas deal like 50 damage a second, so they can take out a worker pretty fast. And other than tank factory, all workers, well, okay, and jump bot, kind of, workers are defenseless. So that is slowing down Rar's expansion as well, which is good for Unlucky, because right now they actually have managed to get ahead. Despite the fact that they had to deal with that bandit earlier, they are managing to get ahead on their economy for the simple reason that Rar just isn't as able to expand. Like as you see here, they are having to protect themselves. Now, granted, this isn't a bad practice in the first place, like sending units to guard... Is that on guard order? Or is that just... Oh, anyway. Sending your units to guard is always a good idea. But the thing is, is that you still... I think Rar probably would be expanding a little bit faster for the fact that they didn't know where the fleas are. At any rate, Unlucky is ahead. 20, 20 metal per second to 13, and quite a lot of energy as well on well, reasonably safe wind generators. I like that. Good good to see both players are paying attention to the tooltips. Know that 1.1 wind is wind. Always wind. All the time. Do not build solars on this map if you can help it. Because wind is so strong. At least on your main base. As for the center of the map, though, it looks like Rar managing to basically set up the way that Unlucky had before, using the bandits in the same play way that the the fleas were being used by Unlucky. Make sure they scout it out. At the same time, Unlucky has lost a lot of map vision in the center of the map. They have no idea really what's going on here. They have radar, because weavers have radar, but they don't have a whole lot of anything else. They also have static radar, just in case, which is always a good choice. So at this point, Rar has a bit of a better idea of what's going on in terms of the map. They have better situation for themselves as far as any kind of map control goes, any kind of economy goes. I mean, they haven't quite managed to take this expansion over here. This expansion could be theirs, but the fleas are getting in the way. And they are aware of what's going on, not able to stop anything, but at least they know where Unlucky has set up. They can, they can raid over this expansion here. They wanted to over in the southeast. They probably know that the southeast expansion has not been taken. I mean, Unlucky knows that Rar hasn't taken this center west or center east expansion, but it still, still could easily be taken. No, sweep through the bandit, and then you're good. So the timing would be known, but the actual expansion itself wouldn't necessarily. Still, though, unlucky, 
they are doing reasonably well, and they have consistently maintained a higher attrition. They've lost hardly anything, only a couple fleas. At the same time, this redback has done a great job keeping bandits at bay, and overall, it's been effective for Unlucky, just staying where they are. The only downside, of course, is they have, and they have no doubt with this, they are accessing metal a little bit. They have the energy, they just didn't have the build power. And into early crab, are they trying to win right away? It's only good thing is like trying to go for that early crab, really get that push in there. Which kind of makes sense. They haven't had a lot of threat. RAR has been building up their commander a little bit. They've been building up their army a reasonable amount. But they haven't really been pushing that hard. They've been building a lot more of their economy and their map control. But the question is, how well is it going to work? And at the very least for them, they're able to get rid of a single recluse. A recluse. I keep calling it, Yeah. Recluse. No, wait. No, I do mean recluse. Yeah. No, it's like brown recluse. No, no, no. I, I definitely mean... So people were commenting in YouTube comments earlier from another game. I was pronouncing wrong. I was like, no, 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 recluse. Brown, like, brown, it's named after the brown recluse spider, not recluse. At any rate, the, yeah, recluses coming in here, managing to get rid of the rogue to some extent. I mean, they're able to outrange it reasonably well. They're able to outfire it reasonably well. If they can actually hit, they'll, they'll be able to outdamage it reasonably well. So that's something. As long as you can do that, you're fine. But, at the same time, it's more a matter of whether or not that's actually going to make a difference, as RAR taking the expansion over to the center west means that they have a very nice avenue right into Unlucky's base. And I mentioned before that Unlucky's usually pretty good about unit counters, and this is no exception. They do have, I mean, they have the recluses where they need to be in order to deal with everything set up. They have, they have the hermits having to come in here, which will help out against some of these heavier units, like especially against the rogue. But even just as a general frontline force. And, of course, the crab... Just like I said, I feel like they're trying to use that crab just to push in, like, really take advantage of their economic advantage. To push in, push forward, and take out Rar's commander, or just anything Rar's built up. But really, to me, the big thing is when these hermits come in. When these get into the battle, that is going to be huge. Because hardly any defenses are over to the eastern side of the map. There's stuff being set up to deal with the recluses, but not a whole lot being set up to deal with a bunch of hermits, a bunch of straightforward assault forces coming over to the eastern side of the map and ripping apart everything. And the western side is being defended reasonably well by this crab. So really all that needs to happen is for that crab to hold its ground while the hermits get in here and start ripping everything apart. And the recluses are doing a fine job at least holding things at bay, but I think now is probably the time for the hermits. And it would seem that Unlucky agrees with me. Getting in those hermits in the, into the center of the map, and I don't know if Rar is aware that these are a thing. No, Rar has no idea these are coming. This is going to be an entire surprise to them. Hopefully it'll be a pleasant surprise. Hopefully they, they like it. It's, it's a birthday surprise. Here, have a bunch of hermits. We managed to get them out of their caves, just for one day. They were so enamored with you, as a person, that they decided to actually socialize with people again. Or maybe just be highly violent, that's... I mean, that's zero, zero case. Socialization and violence are kind of the same thing. These are battle robots. They say hello by shooting you in the face. It's nothing personal. Anyway, Unlucky, at the very least, is able to hold this through, push in, RAR, with a bit of a stronger economy, will be able to counterattack right away, and they are going for, I mean, a lot more rogues. I said the Hermits would be able to deal with the rogues. I meant more in the numbers that were there. Rogues are still a good counter to Hermits in practice. It's just that they're only the two or three. And with the Redbacks as support, it pushes the rogues back. It keeps the Redbacks in a position where they're not being as threatened because the Hermits can take the shots. It's not as big of a deal. But at the same time, Unlucky is not getting a whole lot of momentum here. They're holding off an assault, but they're not actually managing to get much back. The Venom might be of some use. The added recluses will definitely be of some use. But the problem is, how are they going to get themselves back in a position? Because unlucky right now, they're slowly but surely losing ground. They had ground. They were doing reasonably well. But now they're losing that ground. And at this point, while Unlucky is doing a fine job making sure that they have a variety of unit types, and you know, the Venom's doing a good job making sure that the armies of RAR can't be working completely without any oversight. There could still be a problem here. Now, Unlucky in a position where they might want to start building up some tarantulas. Actually. Uh, they know this air unit's here. They know that something's going to happen with the air. They got to deal with that, and they don't have the tools. I mean, the recluses are not going to be able to do that job against the ravens. Not in time, at least. And I'm pretty sure 10 ravens coming in here, Rar's probably going to go for the commander and then go for the factory. Like, 10 ravens is more than enough to take out a factory. That's that is overkill. That's twice as much as you need to take out a factory. If there's anti-air there, that's what you need to take out a factory. And for the commander, same thing. But hey, 
You have 10 ravens. You take out the commander. You take out a bunch of metal extractors. Take out the factory. I mean, you just won. Unless Unlucky decides to respond to that, and I think they might. They do have the crab set up. I would hope they build some tarantulas very soon. They do have their own airplane plant, so at the very least, they are going to respond in kind. But I would like to see some tarantulas here. I mean, they have an army. They have a really good ground army coming in here. Although, I, the hermits in front of the redbacks, I would think would be a better option than having the redbacks go first. In fact, I'm kind of surprised the redbacks are moving forward here. Not really the force you want to have running into a giant group of, of rogues, but hey, it's something. At the very least, the Ravens are being distracted and being announced before they're going to be able to deal any major damage. So, there's the Raptors. Their preparations are complete. Unlucky unlucky knows that Rar has air. Rar knows that Unlucky has some anti-air. But Rar is still going for the massive amount of, of Ravens. That is actually kind of scary. Going for like 20 Ravens in total. How are you going to be able to do that and actually make that work, Rar, without... Well, because you're not... No, you're going to make that work just fine. It's like, how are you going to counter that unlucky? That's the tough part. The Raptors are not a bad idea, but like dealing with that many Ravens before they actually deal damage is going to be tough. Especially as Rar does have the economic advantage and unlucky cannot deal with that. Like unlucky just doesn't have the tools to really push through. They have a decent army spread and they are going for a sneaky assault here. Ooh, nice. Look at this. Hermit's coming in here. And you're going to be going in to try to do what they can. Like basically Hermit's going around the sides. Not even going to the main army, just flanking around everything else. The problem, of course, is that they haven't spotted. Eesh. Oh, I haven't spotted yet. No, Unlucky's commander going under heavy fire, though. Will go down. And that was a recon com, too. That could have jumped. That could have gotten out of there very easily. But now the Hermit's not going in for the assault, which I think is a bit of a shame. They, were, they weren't making a bad choice. I mean, they don't go around the sides. Go all the way around the corners and then, you know, go from there up into the base. As long as you avoid the stinger, you're fine. I mean, that's not going to be too hard to do. If you go along the sides of the cliff. At this point, it might be a little bit too late. The Hermits are taking all the fire from the Ravens. And the Raptors are able to stop that to some extent, but this is not enough. And really, there's not enough anti-air coming in from Unlucky. And especially with Rar continuing to increase their economic lead, there is really not enough that Unlucky can do. Like, all they could really do, I could think of, would be to literally take this grab and push forward. Like, push along here, or maybe try to flank around there. That's all I can see. Or flank through here. But that's all I could see them possibly doing, because right now, they are not in a strong position. And they are going with the Hermits, being very sneaky, but it's not enough. The Hermits are just way too far gone right now. I, it's, it's nice, I, I appreciate the sentiment, I appreciate the effort, it's just not going to be enough. Rar at this point, looks like they're going to slowly grind down Unlucky. The only thing that might work for Unlucky is that they have been doing, in the past, reasonable with attrition, they've, they know what to build... Uh, they generally know what to build as far as countering their opponents go, and they have moved a crab into a good position to at least hold the line. The question, of course, is how are they going to be able to deal with this long term? And I don't see any tarantulas, and I really don't know why. Especially now, the, and now well, the Ravens coming in here, not even going to have to. Unlucky throwing in the towel. Pretty good game, though. Overall, they were reasonably close. They actually had a massive army lead for the majority of the game. Their medal was behind, and that ultimately did lead to Rar getting better attrition and ultimately getting a better army. But really, it was just those Ravens. If those Ravens had been better counted, if Tarantulas had been built up early, then the Ravens would have gone down, and then it wouldn't have been anything. It would have been an easily protected ground force that would have just steamrolled into Rar's base, or at the very least destroyed a bunch of Rar's economy. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Also, the crab in the side didn't do a bad job setting, getting Rar to set up defenses, but it didn't actually pressure beyond that. So I would have liked to see more of that, but man, unlucky. I, I like them. I, I want to see them play more. I want to see how they improve. Because right now, like I said, their knowledge of unit counters and unit tactics is quite strong. The only downside seems to be their understanding of when they can take risks. Like, when they can push. When they can sacrifice a few units to actually get a better result. When they can take a metal extractor that might be a bit risky. And also, retaking metal extractors when they need to. And getting that reclaim going. Like, that's... There's a few things that I think they could have taken a few more risks on that would have paid off. But... For a fairly risk averse style of play, it's worked out pretty well for them so far. And also Rar, I mean, don't be just how far Rar is one of the best players in the game right now. So anyway, that is... Yeah, that's one thing. Oh yeah, also harassing across multiple fronts. That's the other thing I could see Unlucky improving on. Otherwise, well played. A few small things, but hey, for someone who seems to be fairly new to the game, they played it well. So anyway, I'm not sure what map we're going to have next because I think... 
or not map match. We're still gonna be the same map. I'm just not sure if we're gonna be on to round three yet because I think I think we're still in the middle of round two. Yeah, looking at the brackets, unlucky and raw looks like it was the first match that actually did end. Hmm. No, Paul Bell and Orphelius looks like it's finished too. No, it looks like everything's done. Okay, so we'll be coming back in a second to handle round th three. No, never mind. No, no, no. We got one. We have... Let's see. I kind of want to see FFC versus four. Actually, no, I want to see Milan Rouge. No, let's see FFC versus four. We'll, we'll watch Milan Rouge next round. All right, let's check this out. I don't know what these two are doing because FFC and 400, that that will be interesting. Both very strong players. On a map that I think is quite good for supporting strong play. Like, it's it's a map that I view as being a good, strong, basic fundamentals map. Like, there's nothing super cheesy about it. Spider versus Cloakie coming in here. FFC on Spiders. Okay, so F Spiders on this map. Apparently a thing. I thought Unlucky was just being kind of different, but nope. This one, though, it looks like for FSC doing a great job pushing that center. Going for heavy fleas? I mean, we saw that earlier. Yeah, that's that's a thing that can happen. Not earlier in this tournament, but earlier, like a while ago, I saw a game that was heavy on fleas, and it worked, but this is not a thing you see very often. This is strange. Kind of neat, but strange, but also effective. As FSC is doing a great job with the Recluses pushing in, making 400 have defend their main base. They don't, like, none of the sides are being threatened. But the main base is being super heavily threatened by all of these recluses. There's not a whole lot that FFC can really do to screw up here. I like that Lotus as well. Lotus building in the front, making sure that the front line is taken. Splitting up the Northwest. 400 does have the Northwest, however. They could still set up at least some economy from there. They do have a worker up there that could potentially build some backup factories if need be. And the Eastern side as well being built up. And does have a backup hover factory. Nice sneaky play from 400. Getting that backup hover factory to send in back lines. Possibly go for a bit of a base trade. Or at the very least, force FFC to rethink things. Because they're going to lose their own base. They're not careful. They don't hold... If they don't hold back a little bit and pull back and actually deal with these daggers coming in the sides, that could be a problem. So nice sneaky play by 400. As FFC won from the main base, has taken out the main factory, but could potentially lose their own base in the process. Still a little bit tricky. The Halberds coming in here, having to deal with the fleas and having a tough time doing so. Hovers do not have a great job against fleas. I mean, maces can work. Maces will work really well. But daggers don't. Halberds don't. But yeah, the dagger and coming in here. This might be a little late. I'm a little concerned about that because the daggers and halberds, like, yeah, that's that's a thing. They're not going to do a bad job against the fleas and the redbacks, or fleas and the recluses. But the question is, is it going to work? And 400, no, FFC with that Dante coming in here, trying to basically push in. Oops. Okay, this is weird. Frame rate really shut up the camera, apparently. FFC able to get in that Dante, but even then, not enough getting drilled into a hole. So at this point, not able to do much of anything. This Dante, unable to do any work. 400, at least able to stay alive for now. But FFC, with that economic advantage, despite the fact that they have taken out F 400's main base, 400 still kind of on the back foot here. Their second factory being threatened to the point that it could go down now. And I don't think 400 has anything else planned. They do have, like I said, a conjure over the northwest side of the map. They could build another factory there. But FFC didn't get a base trade. They just took a base. That's it. At this point, with 400 losing their factory, that is game throwing in the towel not a bad not a bad play though i do like that upper factory that came in there unfortunately daggers do not deal with fleas very well but man if that had ha had it worked or if they had set a mace with those daggers taking care of the fleas and then use that to push in in the main base there's not a lot of defenses there there's a couple lotuses and that's it there would have been an easy time for the daggers to get in and just rip everything apart there could have been a proper base trade actually 400 could have gone for that with a mace. But no, the fleas came in from FFC. Great choice there to keep going with the fleas. I question the fleas, but I keep getting proven wrong when I use it. So now I think that might be it for round two. Yeah, that was it for round two. That was the last match for round two. So now we're going to be moving on to round three. As at this point, we are midway through the Swiss portion of the tournament. RAR currently setting on top. At RAR and FFC both sitting on top. Both two wins each. And... Yeah, Unlucky, Major Officer Felius, and 400. Doing pretty well, okay. Paul Bello and Milo and Rouge at the bottom. I'm going to cast that first next round. Because I do like to cast the 
the best players in the last round, and so I also like to cast players I haven't cast yet. I haven't cast Paul Bello or Milan Rouge. They're going to be together next round, so we'll start with that. Anyway, round three in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs> 